All right, I've got another DLC for Tabletop Simulator to show off. And before I begin, I figured I'd note that this is a game that, well, I didn't really like how it's basically sort of set up and how it appears in the game, or like what the rule book was like or anything like that. So this is actually one of like the ones that I really don't care much about. So you probably won't see me playing this beyond this point. But anyways, let's just go into a little bit. Wizards of Camry is a cooperative board game in which you play as an apprentice wizard during a magical emergency. The wizard who owns the academy is missing, along with all your teachers. It's down to you and other students, um, basically to, you know, fix up the magical emergency. You have a lot going for you. The infinite power of magic allows you to summon, dismiss, move, adjust, switch, or empower any aspect of the game. Only one thing stands in your way. None of you have a faintest clue what any of your spells actually do. So basically some features of this game is it's like a trial by fire. You have to basically experiment to basically figure out what you're supposed to be doing. So, like, you have spells, but you don't know what they actually do. Um, you have, like, millions of possible spell layouts. You have, like, you know, um, dozens of threats, like, you know, imps, fires, plus and other stuff to deal with. Uh, the threats can come at each other. So, basically, in this game, like, the traps will actually, like, you know, go after each other. So, like, an imp will, um, like, go after fires and floods if it's, like, nearby. Uh, a troll will eat an imp. Demons will eat trolls and imps. And then, like, you know, there's stuff that will kill demons as well. And there's also, like, different scenarios that you can have. So there's, like, different, like, you know, playthroughs you can have for this game, which is, you know, fairly appealing, but the game itself, it feels like it's not, like, you know, polished very well. And that's why I really don't like it, but whatever. Let's just see if we can find it in here. There it is right there right away, so that's nice. I'm going to leave this here for a moment, but uh, basically we're going to slow up the DLC here. So basically, just randomize all objects in the zone. When you basically press this, you'll see that these guys all get randomized. These like map tiles. So, poof. That's the point of that. And there's a reason to basically do it. Basically, in this game, this is going to be like your play area, and you can basically randomize it with your like the, the computer if you want to, which is very nice. Um, if not, then you have to like do it by hand. Which I actually, you know, I actually have to do it by hand. We'll actually pick this all up. So we'll group all them all up. And um, are you gonna let me uh, group them or not? Maybe it won't. We'll just do this like this then. That's one of the things. I really don't think much about this how this table's set up because it isn't really set up very well. Um, oh, that's the problem. Basically, these have states, these cards. So it's not like this game is very is like it was set up very well. We're just going to do that to them, and we're just going to shuffle them a little bit. But alright, basically you're getting the idea. Basically this is one of the reasons I don't like about this game is that it's not really set up very well. The idea, like, one, the rule of instructions basically say at the start of a game you're supposed to, like, you know, shuffle these, and then from them you're supposed to, like, randomly, like, you know, set up, like, your, your board game, right? We actually have to randomize it with the button because uh, um, it, how it's basically set up with like states and such, you can't actually do it unless you do that. So, there's that. Anyways, the idea for this game is that you have like, you know, a bunch of spells that you'll basically you'll be able to cast. And you have like this randomized like, you know, uh, setup for like, you know, your play area. Um, there's multiple threats that you can deal with, though it, in this scenario I'm going to be playing like the, the, the tutorial scenario. We're not going to have that many threats to basically deal with, but that's fine. Um, we're just going to go here into the core rulebook, so we'll go to page 4, I think? No, 5. And basically here in, in the quick start rules, basically for, you know, um, setting up, uh, we have to basically, uh, here's, yeah, I guess the idea for this. Um, <clears throat> the basic, this is the basic introduction to the game, allowing you to get started quickly with a minimum of fuss. You should be able to master the basic game in a couple of sessions. Once you have managed this, the, the much higher advanced game awaits. Basically, there's like, you know, uh, a basic game, which is like for tutorial purposes and as an advanced game. I won't be covering the advanced game because I really don't care much about this game, but the basic game should give you a deal with how, basically how to play. In the basic game, the apprentices are trying to ward the mana crystal against fire. To win, they must cast the Abjure spell in the, mana crist um, in the mana crystal while nothing is currently on fire. To lose the mana crystal, it runs out of mana or if they run out of time. And I'll, I'll go into it a little bit in a bit, but let's just set it up for now. Um, basically, for setup, you have like these quick rules for here. So each player uh, selects a character at random. Use only characters with special schools. Indicated by the icon besides the character's name for basic game. Alright, so with special schools. Alright, if you go to the end here. 
I have no idea what special schools basically means, but whatever. Uh, basically, there's a bunch of these characters you can basically play. You've got, like, you know, um, let's just go through them quickly. You've got Flitter here. She's the, um, I guess, the, the fairy. Flitter is silver tongue purveyor of black market magical weaponry. I meant to do that. Of course, I knew what the spell did, as I'm a hardworking student. What other reason do I have to be here? Basically, she, they all have special abilities. And, like, you know, her special ability would be, like, it costs you one fewer glyph to use room actions to acquire magical items. You may carry additional item of your type of your choice. So, basically, she's pretty awesome for carrying more stuff. Um, then we have uh, Susie here. Susie is seven, but has seen more worlds than arc mages. Well, now, you're just being a big silly. We can get there in no time if you stop refusing to take a shortcut through the demon dimension. So, yeah, basically, um, that's the, her, like, little uh, synopsis. Her special ability is that at the start of a turn, you may choose to make any and all rooms contain portals to join each other. Spaces you can move around much easier if there's portals nearby. Um, I'm not really sure what it means by specialty schools. Basically, these guys all have like different, like, you know... Um, oh, okay. Arena doesn't have a, 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 a school she's basically uh, a part of. So, you can only use Bramble Form, Malkir, Nivetta, Clix, Susie, and Flitter, I guess, for like the basic game. You can't use Arena. So, okay, that's fine. Let's just get this out of the way now before I forget. Components, tools, MP3 player, because we need one apparently. Um, let's go a little rock today, I guess. Here's a question. I put this in a box. Will it do anything? Yeah, it will. Well, that's unfortunate. Basically, that's another thing I really don't like about this table. It's a very small table. Smack. We'll put that over there because I got really no room on the table for it. And whatever, if it repeats or not, I don't really care at this point. Alright, so basically, I have to randomly select a character. Um, you have to basically, like, you know, do it somehow, but. The way I basically figure it would be best to do would be go into um, the objects here. We'll go basically for um, a dice. Basically, at the start, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six characters. So we just need you know, a standard six-side six dice to pick a character. So there's a d6. We're just going to randomly roll it. And we got number two. So we'll go basically one, two. We're going to be play playing Susie, apparently, as one of our characters. So she's that pink one over here and she'll basically start on a mana crystal we have to roll for another character because I want to have like a couple characters here so we're at two three two three uh three four five one two three four five okay we're also going to be playing Malkara apparently, so here's this guy's a uh, bit. Knowledge always comes at a price that few are willing to pay. As soon as everyone knows a thing, it is called it, a thing is no longer called knowledge. So basically, this guy's uh, heritage makes him immune to attempts to divine evil tent. Whenever you kill a creature with a damaging spell, gain one glyph of any type that another wizard possesses for each damage required to kill it. So basically, this guy gets glyphs for killing stuff. So he's a killer, and then she's like fast. All right, so Malcare is not the bear, not the uh, the ant, not the fire starter. There we go. And yeah, I, I know like just basically different like you know characters in this game. Like Susie is like you know the uh, little kid, you know genius. This guy's a demon. Um, Irene is basically like a, a haughty noble, a fairy. And then, like, you know, you got, like, this guy who's, like, you know, outer dimensional planes guy who came from somewhere. Clicks. Arriving for the interdimensional accident and stuck around. All right, let's get some characters, like, you know, set up. So, basically, we'll have Susie step there, and we'll go... Nalcor for the rest here. So, basically, um, for these guys, um, his special ability will let him, like, get more glitz from killing stuff. This guy, uh, she'll basically be able to move around the board more easily, just to give you a basic idea of what to do. Let's continue setting up the board, so... After we basically play, uh, place our guys, um, remove the lost room from the, t from the pack. It is not used in a basic game, so 
The Lost Room is apparently like, you know, one of the rooms that doesn't get played in a base game. Um, they quickly go over it. Where is it here? Here's the Lost Room. Um, basically, the Lost Room, you may collect glyphs in this room even if it's not empowered. Um, this room basically is locked off from like the rest of the academy. Just like, you know, no doors on this room at all, as you can see. Like the other ones, this one has doors right here, 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 and there. Um, if I go to the Ward Room, the Ward Room has like a wall here and like a door there. So basically, you know, just walls and like some of these stuff. This one has like no doors at all, the Lost Room. So I guess like, you know, for purposes of like, you know, um, basically you can teleport around, but we're just going to get rid of this room because we don't really need it for it. So it's gone. And after we get rid of that one, we have to shovel the remaining 16 tiles, so we already did that because, you know, that's where we did the started thing. And then we place them face up in a table, randomly oriented in a 4x4 square. So in order to set up text of the master study in the other dimension. So um, basically for the rest of it, we have to like orient these to be like, you know, in different like, you know, patterns, I guess. So what we're going to do for that, let's just go in here, we'll get dice and we'll get ourselves a four side dice. And we're just going to use this dice to determine like how these rooms are oriented. So we roll it once and we got four. So this thing will basically be in state four, which means it'll be pointed like this. It doesn't really affect the enchanted well, but whatever. Let's try see if the other rooms are like that. This one's going to be free. Curse room again doesn't really do anything to it. One. One. All right. So basically the wicked room, it doesn't have a door down here. So if, um, you know, I try to get into the wicked room, I can't go from the library up to it. Unless, like, you know, I oriented the room, and you can actually do that. Uh, we got ourselves a 4 here. So... Flux point is going to be 4. Flux point basically has a wall over here, because it's facing, like, the outside of the academy. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the unstable room is going to be... a 3. So there's a unstable room done. The library is going to be a 2. The Holy Room is going to be a 1, and that's, you know, already set up as a 1, so it doesn't even matter. Let's set the Horde as a 4, so it's got a wall there, so it can't get up to, like, the Unstable Room, apparently, from here. We got 1 for the Scrying Chamber, so it's going to stay as is. Workshop's going to be a 4. The Master Set is going to be a 3. We're going to have a 4 for the Ward Room. So, apparently this room is going to have like a door going up this way, but it won't have a door over here. Uh, we have to set up a 4 for a player rift. And we have to set up a 4 for the mana crystal. And 2 for the laboratory. Alright, so basically all our rooms are set up. Uh, we can get rid of that dice we don't really need at this point. Don't really need this one either. Um, it also says something about like, the Master's Room and like the uh, Outer Dimension. Basically, the Master's Study in the Outer Dimension. Um, the Outer Dimension is basically like outside of the Academy. So this room starts outside of the Academy. But um, because like, you know, we're ignoring it, it can stay actually in, in the Academy. And this one doesn't really matter which way it's set up because it's got, like, you know, it's got rooms all over the place. So basically there's like a way into the Outer Dimension from, uh, you know, uh, the Academy, I guess. In like the normal game, basically this would be like outside and you have to find some music into the other dimension from, uh, you know, um, the academy, but basically right now it's like that. Alright, so, um, we ignore the room set up text for a master studies in the other dimension, so, uh, that's basically starting inside the academy and the master's, uh, um, studies right here. You place a guardian here at the start of the game, we're not playing like the advanced game, so there's gonna, gonna be no guardian there, it's just gonna be an empty room. They have to pass through. And that's basically it for that one. Let's go to the next uh, rule set. So, number three. During the setup of the basic game, if there is a room that cannot be reached by, by, from a mana crystal by any route, then the players may freely rotate the room tiles until all t rooms can be reached. So, I have to see if like all rooms are basically connected to like this uh, room here, because it's like my base, basically. It's like, like all the power. So, this room's connected. This room's connected. This room's connected. These rooms are not connected. These rooms are connected. These rooms are connected. These rooms are conne connected. Connected. Um, these rooms are connected. And like, you know, connected. So basically a wall right between these ones. These are connected. These are connected. They're, these are... These rooms are not connected over here. So, basically these rooms here, the Horde and the Ward uh, room, are basically dis disconnected from the Academy. And we can't actually have that. 
these have to be connected somehow. So I have to start rotating um, rooms, basically make them like connected. Um, one way I can do it is using the scry chamber. I can like rotate this one, and that's one way I can make these connected. And I think that's like you know the main way. The other way is like I can actually make the horde like you know um, not really connected, but uh, let's just go like this. We're just gonna go like so. So now basically these are all lined up. And now everyone's connected, so that's fine. And then for four, shuffle all the room cards to form the room deck. Draw five cards. If the cursed room is drawn, discard it and draw a room to replace it. Place glyph sources one to five on rooms drawn. Draw room cards, uh, form the discard pile. So basically here's like the room cards. We're just going to quickly shuffle them. And we'll quickly draw five cards. One, uh, you know what, it'd be quicker to do it, you know, actually drew them, so. We're just going to... Draw, 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 draw. Um, we got the instill room, the enchanted well, the laboratory, and the master study, and the shrine table. So we, only, we didn't get the um, the curse room, so that's fine. Uh, the enchanted well. The enchanted well is going to get one of our glyph sources. So they're up here, basically. You got the type one source glyph. This will go on the enchanted well. Uh, I finished the enchanted well right up there. It is indeed. So you'll go right there. And this will go into the discard pile right there. We're going to have this one be uh, the unstable room. So this one's going to be right here. And I'll go right there. The laboratory will be um, where source number three will be. So we'll put this right here. So we right away have a glyph right next to each other, right next to us. So that's interesting. When I basically played this initially in my, my test game, um, I basically had like the um, the higher level glyphs like really far away. In this case, we got the lower level glyphs apparently really far away, so that's interesting. Uh, the master study is going to be where number four is going to be, so we'll put this right here. And then the scrying chamber is number five. And that's the scrying table right there, so... We got basically free glyphs very, very close to the, um, the mana crystal, and then we got the level 1 and level 2 spell glyphs all the way over there in the corner. Um, that's actually not too bad because the level 1 and 2 um, glyphs aren't as important as level 4 and 5. So that's fine. We'll put those like there, like that. And now we'll read this little blurb. Cards in a deck should be face down, and cards in a discard pile should be face up, unless otherwise specified. Cards are placed in the appropriate discard pile when played. Players must examine the cards in the discard pile at any, uh, may examine the cards in the discard pile at any time. If the room deck is empty and you need to draw from it to shuffle the discard pile for a new deck. So you can basically like, you know, guess what like, you know, um, cards haven't been played, I guess, if like you know the game a little bit more. Uh, for rule number five, place guardians on glyphs four and five. So glyphs four and five are well guarded um, glyphs, so we're gonna have our guardians basically guarding them. And golems basically are like guardians and how they work. Um, basically, golems are like these manufactured, like, you know, um, defenders for, like, the academy. They'll help protect you, your wizards, as well as protect, like, you know, yourself, from yourself. Um, basically, they'll defeat, like, enemy intruders that like, try and come after you, and they'll stop you from, like, picking up these glyphs for, like, you know, Form 5, if, like, you don't know what they do. So, basically, they're here to protect you, and protect you. From outside forces, and from yourself. That's how they basically work. Alright, so basically we got uh, that done away, so 6. Shuffle the following spell cards and deal them face down onto the level uh, 1 spaces on the spell grid. So, Kleptomania, Philanthropy, Danger, Nova, Dash, and Traditional Twist. So, we have to basically go in here and we have to take out spells. Um, I guess they're right up here, so we have to basically search for the right spells we need. We need to have Kleptomania. Um, uh, I'll note by the way that some of these are like blights, so uh, we, we'll take like Nova because we basically see that. Nova. We want Dash. And we want Dimensional Twist. And we're just going to take these cards and we'll throw them right over here. And then from here, we'll basically pick up the Boshes. Basically, Boshes are like bad spells that you can cast. Um, I think they're actually, you know, Flantry. Um, Cuffin Mania, 
and danger at the start. Now, before I basically shuffle these, let's actually have a look at them so you can see how they basically so work. These are like, you know, your good spells you can cast and how they basically work. Dimensional Twist lets you rotate your room 9 degrees, so let's say, like, you know, one of these rooms are like in a way that I really don't like them. Um, let's say, for example, that um, I want the player rift to have it so, like, you know, I can have like a door up here, for example. I can actually rotate room, this room to be like, you know, rotate in that direction if I want to. Uh, same with like the scrying chamber if I want to. I probably won't use this spell at all, but you know, this basically that's what it does, so that's the menstrual twist. Um, we have Nova. Basically deal one damage to everyone in the room, so basically, you know, it's basically a damage spell. And if, um, I'm not by these like spell, like, um, schools, like, icons on them. These are like boosts for like, you know, your spells, so for example, if, um, Malker, uh, casts a destruction spell, he'll basically do a boosted effect for it, so, um, let's just look at this way. Susie basically is like part of like the like dimensional like magic school, so she basically boosts like dimensional magic spells. So if she basically does this, she may ro rotate any other room instead of your, her, her room. So basically, if she casts dimensional twist, she'll be able to ro rotate any room if she wants, regardless of where she is. If uh, she casts Nova though, she can only deal one damage to every um, target in the room. Whereas if Malkar casts it, he can basically deal one extra damage to one target in the room. So basically, he does two damage with Nova, as opposed to one damage for Susie. But he can't actually, like, you know, rotate um, any other room with Dimensional Twist, so there's that. Uh, then there's Dash here. Dash lets you basically uh, move, lets you make, you know, <clears throat> three times during the course of your turn, you may move one space uh, without spending an action, so um, basically if you want to. Uh, if you cast this spell, you can move three, three tiles Im immediately. Or if you if you have, like, the, um, the school for it, the next time you pick up two, a glyph this turn, Gain two copies of that glyph. So basically, you can pick up two glyphs if you want to with Dash. Very handy if you get that. And then we've got the botches down here. Uh, danger, you teleport to whichever empowered room has the most threats. Basically, that sends you to, like, you know, danger. Uh, Kleptomania, select another player, take all the glyphs from their glyph collection and share glyphs and place them in your glyph collection. So this is basically a stealing spell. You basically get a copy of all their stolen glyphs. And then you've got Flantry, which basically does the reverse of this. Select an art player and move all the glyphs in your glyph um, collection to their glyph collection. So basically give them their, your stuff. Anyway, so let's just group these up and we're just going to flip them around and shuffle them. Now these spots here, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. These are all corresponding like, uh, for like the, the level 1 spells, so we're going to put them down here. And how this basically works. Um, basically just like level 1 spells, level 2 spells, level 3 spells, and level 4 spells in this game. And you have to like use the glyphs here to basically cast them. So these spells, uh, these spell glyphs are used to cast like this spell right here. These ones would be cast for this one right here. And if you have one of this and one of this, you could cast uh, like you could cast um, blah. You, if you have one of this and one of this, you could cast like you know this spell right here. And again, if you have this spell and this spell, you could cast that one. Basically, you get the idea. You have to have this glyph for this glyph, for this glyph to cast this spell. That's how like, basically the randomized you know spells work in this game. And it's at least to like, you know, a lot of like random like generation for like, you know, different like playthroughs, for example. Alright, so that's basically level 1 spells. Now we also have to get uh, these spells to face, enrage, burn, cough, flood, summon imps, teleport itself, snuff, bend dimension, and abjure. And abjure is the one that we actually have to cast to um, uh, save the academy, so basically that's what we're looking for, abjure. And again, these are all going to be all on the top here, so there's uh, that one, there's that one. There's that one, and there's Abjur. So basically, here's the four good spells, and then here's the bosses for them. One, two, three, four. So Abjur, Tell Yourself, Bend the Mission, Snuff, Burn, Summon Imp, Deface, and Call Flood. So Abjur, draw the top three cards from the room deck and replace them on the top of the deck of any order. We probably won't see me do this because of the simple fact that it's easier to like use it to win the game. So why would I do that? Uh, but basically, the idea for this is that you can use it to like you know um, restructure like you know the RNG for the game. Teleport self basically you can teleport to any room containing the academy. So you can basically teleport. Bend dimension basically lets you switch the position of any two rooms adjacent to each other. So you can basically like you know switch like you know one room with another, or you can switch the positions of two empowered rooms, which I'll basically get into uh, a bit later. But basically, any room that's connected with the mana crystal is empowered. So if like you know you have like this room here and this room here and they're both empowered by mana crystal, I can switch them around. Uh, if I just do the basic stuff, then you'll switch to adjacent rooms. Pretty simple, straightforward spell. And then a snuff here, remove a fire token from your room. Enough said, this gets rid of fire. You may remove a fire token from a joining room instead if you have the advanced like you know one. So uh, that'd be that'd be cool if you have the elementalist. 
Now I'll note by the way that these guys basically they've got like the destruction and like the dimensional um, spell boost for for them retrospectively. If I go to like a place like here, uh, there's like you know these like boosts on like these like certain rooms where if I'm in these rooms, you'll actually get boosts to like you know the spells. So if I if I have Malker in this room, I'll get like the boosted effect for dimensional spells. Um, one of these other ones will actually have one for an elementalist over here. So uh, that would be the flux point over here. So if I have if I'm in a flux point with um, either of these guys, I can get advantage to like the elementalism, which would mean that I'd be able to um, uh, uh, basically remove fires in adjoining rooms. So if I'm in like the flux point, I can remove spells in the awakening room or the holy room basically with them if I cast a spell. Um, I'll notice there's also burn, summon amp, the face, and call flood. Burn basically lets you place a fire token in a room, which is not good, but whatever. Summon imp lets you basically place an imp in your room, so they basically steal your stuff. Um, it kind of basically a nuisance. The face basically lets you like you know select a glyph type that has at least one wizard, and and everyone loses that glyph, so that's just robbery. You don't want that to happen. And then call flood, place a water token in your room, which basically gets rid of like you know fire, but it will also um, slow you down if you walk in that room. I'm not sure what this is all about, but select a direction and move until you hit something impassable. Um, I guess that basically makes you move in a direction really, really fast if like you have like you know dimensional. So that may, very, may, may be very good for Susie. But anyway, so let's just uh, bunch these all up, and we're just going to flip them, shuffle them, and let's place them. I'm missing a spell apparently, so what am I missing? Um, I'm probably missing a botch. We're missing a range here apparently, so activate all imps, trolls, and demons in your room and in adjacent rooms. Basically, this spell will cause it so, like, you know, enemies are activated, so um, they will basically, like, you know, start moving around doing stuff and being a nuisance. Okay, let's just uh, group these up again and we'll shuffle them in. Do this again. So one. Two. Three. Four. Five. So there's a spell set up. Alright, well, at this point, let's just continue on. So we basically set up our spells. The level 3 and 4 spells in this basic spell we are not using in a basic game, so basically you only got access to basic spells for the introductory game. Um, you shuffle the following disaster cards to form the disaster deck. All cards of the activated press, one card of the mo wild mastery and one co um, copy of the imp invasion. So basically you have to go over here to like the disaster cards. Um, uh, one moment. In here basically you're going to take the 8 activated cards here, we'll put them basically put over here in the disaster deck. So basically take all these. We're also going to take one of these wild magic cards, and over here in the uh, level one decks, so that's zero still. You take an imp vision. And these are my these are going to be my initial um, my deck for like you know uh, disasters. Basically, these work kind of like uh, um, the captain is dead, where like you draw them and like you know um, your guys will basically be able to see what's going to be happening. Because um, I'll get to that in a bit, but basically these will be drawn to like you know indicate so what's going to happen in the next turn. Um, so that's done, and then we have to go over here to uh, shuffle the following disaster cards to form a progression deck. Basically, these are like you know your advanced stuff. So twist, gathering, lure, power, invasion, and two copies of fire. So those will be in like uh, the next one here. So we want to have lure, power, gathering, twist, and. I think there's two copies of fire. Oh, your infant invasion, and two copies of fire. So there we go. We're just gonna shuffle the progression deck. So twist, gathering, lure, power, infant invasion, and two copies of fire. Then you have to place the miniatures for your character on the mana crystal and place five mana tokens there. So. Um, basically, we've placed our characters there, and then we have to place like uh, a mad tokens there. We're just going to take a uh, previous out right now. One, two, and three. 
And we're just going to take our mana crystal and put it right there. So basically we've got mana well with five mana in it. And if that gets depleted, we're basically done for. Abandon all hope. Alright, um, each player draws a card from a disaster deck. They may look at the, this card and discuss its contents, but should not show it to other players. I don't know why this is a rule, but um, basically the idea is that like, you know, each draw like a card for yourself. And you can basically look at it and be like, hmm. Alright, so we're basically going to have to activate threats in a, couple, in a few rooms. Uh, I guess, like, you know, that's what you're supposed to do, but in, a, in reality, but you're just being like, you know, uh, having flipped over and thinking, like, you know, everyone's going to be able to see him. So basically, when, like, it's Malkor's turn, he's going to activate all the threats in the war room, in the curse room, and uh, Sue is basically going to have, like, you know, all these threats activated in, like, this place. There's actually clearly no threats in the war, so he's gonna, not going to do anything in these ones, but that's fine. Um, that basically gets us turns to do stuff. Alright, so. The spells and disasters required in a basic game are marked by the icon in the bottom right corner of the card to make them easier to separate from the rest of the deck. So something to note by the way is that the cards here, they have like these little like circles to let you know they're like for the basic game. And that's what you have to look out for. Uh, the game has this nice little, you know, little blurb, but that doesn't really uh, matter with the rule set, but it like tells you a little bit about the wizardry and all that stuff, so. So little pets for us circle young, young ladies. Selja and Tuva sat amidst the pile of tomes, cataloging the creatures that inhabit the land beyond the academy walls. Usually, something pulls forth creatures from other dimensions, but through combining summoning and teleportation, they were sure they would be able to bring a pet into the academy. They began their casting, and all was well until they reached a portion of the spell determining what they would summon. I want a goat, said Selja, so that we can get milk and cheese. Well, I want a kitty, said Tuva, so that we can stroke it and play with it. Well, if you're having a kitty, I want a lion, because they're like kitties, but bigger, and I could ride it. Oh yeah? Then I'm summoning a griffin, so that I can ride it, and it could fly. In that case, I want a dragon, so I could fly, and get the brief fire. The spell crackled in the life, and called forth a mystic creature, a chimera, for the northern barons. Its three heads blinked expectantly, and Selja asked the goat's head, What are you? And it replied, I'm Freedy. Tuba was enraptured by the lion's head, and asked it. What are you? And it smiled and said, I'm Sprat. The third head, the dragon's head, growled at, the being, at being the last to be asked. Nervously they asked it, What are you? And it gave a toothy grin before replying, I'm hungry. So, I guess we can guess what happened to them. Basically, you have to be, you have to be, it's, it sort of like tells you like you have to be careful of your spells because they can have unintended consequences if you're not careful of them. Alright, so play the basic game. The first player to ask, how do we decide who goes first goes first? So, how do we decide who goes first? I'm going first. And I'm going to pick one of my characters to go first in a bit. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, and then you basically play proceeds clockwise. So, if, like, you know, someone's here and someone's here, um, I guess this person goes next. On their turn, a player, a player takes uh, the following steps in order. So basically, in the basic game, you basically play a disaster card, you draw a disaster card, you take free action, and then you draw threats. Now, note by the way that this is a little bit different from the advanced game. In the advanced game, when a, when a character starts, you play your disaster card, you draw a new disaster card, you make a move action, a room action, and a spell action, you endure the threats that are happening, and then you share a glyph. And I'm going to note by the way, I'm actually going to use like, the, the advanced turn sequence because I think it's a little bit more like, you know... Um, Telling you what the game's gonna be more like about, so we'll do that. I'm not too like new that I have to, you know, basically use the basic games like stuff here. Um, play the disaster card. Basically, for this, you have to like, you know, place a fret, activate a fret, um, activate a fret in all rooms or special. And like, you know, the idea is that basically, if like there's no frets on the board, then you can't do anything about them. You have to worry about activating them. If they are there, you have to activate them. If um, you're told to place them, you have to place a fret. And if there's like the special one over here for like wild matches, because the Wild Master uh, Disaster requires some additional clarification. When Wild Master occurs, shuffle all unbound face down spells on the appropriate level of the grid and then deal them back into the grid. Wild Master is pretty bad because basically what happens is it will cause me to have to shuffle like all these spells here for like the level 1's um, category. All like, you know, to be like, you know, sh shuffled again to be like, you know, um, randomized. Um, it's possible to actually know what these spells are um, and then have Wild Master like, you know, uh, basically make them so they're unknowable un un to you. So that's kind of bad, but whatever. Alright, so, <clears throat> after that you draw a disaster card for like, you know, your next turn, you take three actions, and these can be, basically be a move action to move, a room action to take a glyph, a room action to bind a spell, 
Um, a ma magic action to cast a spell, and um, that's basically all the stuff you can basically do in like the base game here. Uh, I'll basically go into this when we actually get into it, but basically the idea is like you can move around, um, you can take the glyphs to cast spells, and you can like cast spells with glyphs. And then you endure threats, but basically cut, or like you know, basically have to like you know deal with the threats that happen. Here's the threats basically in order because you got like the imps who basically will like steal your um, glyphs to basically cast spells, and they can like get rid of like fire and water if like it's nearby, but for the most part, they're basically just nuisances that steal your, your glyphs. Fire is basically spreads for the academy, consuming the realms of flames, making them dangerous to enter. Uh, you got water. Water ro uh, floods rooms, which making them more difficult to move through. So basically, if water's in it, basically you can't move through as fast. And if it's too much water, you can drown it. Uh, the imp portal basically sends a bunch of imps into like the academy, and these guys will like you know run around stealing your stuff. So this produces more imps. And then there's guardians. Guardians are basically animated statues sticking to protect the wizards of the academy. They are not considered to be threats. If an imp enters a room with a guardian, the imp is killed. Remove it from play. So basically, you guys are like your helpful guys. But a guardian will not let wizards take glyphs that they do not understand. Wizards cannot take glyphs actually in a room containing a guardian. So these rooms with guardians, um, for example, I can't actually take these glyphs here, like the um, the, the type four source glyph with uh, this guy in tow. Until this guy is dealt with, this golem, you uh, basically can't take the glyphs from here. Unless you know all the spells, but um, in order to know these spells, I actually have to, have to get rid of the golem so I can uh, start casting him. So there's that in a way. And then there's like, you know, the mana crystal and the other stuff. So, mana crystal. Whenever a fret is placed in the mana crystal, the, the fret is removed and the mana crystal loses some mana. So, um, if there's like, you know, uh, imp, a couple of imps in like the mana crystal here, it'll basically expand mana. If uh, this mana gets depleted to zero, you lose. That's basically how mana crystal works. And if like it's same for like fire, water, anything else that gets placed in there. All right, so the other stuff. Many elements of the game have no effect on the basic game. Character special abilities are ignored. Uh, okay, so apparently the character special abilities are ignored. So we're not gonna worry about like you know what Susie and uh, Malkar apparently can do. Okay, interesting. So basically, what this is saying, uh, Susie can't use her special ability to uh, basically um, use portals to go wherever she wants. And Malkar, you can't use his special ability where he basically has extra glyphs for killing people. So, there's like, you know, um, kind of nothing in this, I guess, really. Whatever. It kind of begs the question why I couldn't use the other one if they, you know, they can't use their stuff, but whatever. Um, the room actions are in the library are not used. So, apparently it can't use, like, the room actions, so... Um, basically what that's is saying, you can't use, like, the, um, uh, what is it here? You can't use the Holy Room's boost to boost like your spells. Uh, you can't use like the Flex Point to boost your spells, so we can't use these um, to boost our spells apparently. I might ignore that rule so you can see some of the advanced stuff, uh, but I guess it's just, it's just there to make it a little bit harder for you if you're playing a basic game. Uh, once you've mastered, yeah, mastered it, you can like basically play, you know, blah blah. So victory and defeat. If the Mad Crystal loses all its mana token, the Chemic Class and you have failed. If you need to draw a disaster card and both disaster deck and a progression deck are empty, then you have failed. If the wizard ca casts a drift spell while the mana crystal on the mana crystal, and there are currently no fire tokens on the board, then the crystal has been detected and you're victorious, and then you're ready to try advanced scenarios. So that's basically all after uh, basic rules. I think it's about time to actually get into this game, I guess, right? So let's get started. Um, determine who's going to go first. Let's just you know grab our dice, I guess, in here. Uh, that's a mana crystal, I don't really need that. Let's just search the box then. And we'll take you out. One to three, I'll let Susie go first. Four to six, I'll let Malkar go first. Poof! Malkar goes first, okay. <clears throat> There's no actual dice for this game, but whatever. <clears throat> 